So in today's episode, I'm going to be talking about owls. So I have had a lifelong obsession with owls. Uh, I've been fortunate all my life to live close to, I suppose, what you could term a wilderness area. Uh, When I lived in the UK, I probably would just say, oh, I lived out in the country. Um, In Nova Scotia, I don't necessarily live out in the country, but just because of the way things are in Canada, I am really close to a wilderness area. And I suppose that's a common term for both instances. In the UK, I lived very close to Ashdown Forest. Um, So down near where I lived, I think we often used to call this the top road. And I was sort of one road down for that, from that, if you like. And literally you'd cross this road and you'd be on Ashdown Forest. Now, areas of Ashdown Forest, we'll get onto it in a moment. Um, There are areas that are so-called common land uh, i don't think there's a similar term necessarily in nova scotia i think you know you probably refer to it as crown land maybe uh, i'm not sure but anyway, in the uk there's a term called common land also often areas that aren't common land might have rights of way over them particularly you know out in the countryside uh, a little bit later when i lived in the uk i moved to nutley and again that's on the edge of Ashdown Forest so this is the area of Ashdown Forest that it's close to in Nutley it was a case of just walking down one of these country lanes and I'd be on Ashdown Forest so you could probably argue you know in both instances I was no more than about five minutes walk from Ashdown Forest to put it into perspective in both places you can see the green land here um, is the common land there's bits in the middle you can see that aren't green um, here and here these are two areas that are owned well this side um, used to be owned by the, the scouting association in the uk i'm trying to remember who this was owned by it was another, another similar sort of youth organization so this is uh, Broadstone Warren, this is Hindley Warren, most of this. It is possible to walk through this. There are paths on here uh, as well. But it, it, there is some degree of fencing around this, but there are gates into this in various places. This area here, quite a bit of this chunk is an army range. So you don't really want to be wandering around on there. But there are other areas where there's, um, I think there's a couple of hotels and other establishments, other country establishments. Uh, There's a llama farm somewhere down here, llama and alpaca farm. And again, there are some um, like farm lanes that you can sort of walk down, like somewhere here, there's one that walk down and you end up here. Um, But you can see here's Forest Row and literally, you know, right on the edge of Ashdown Forest and here's Nutley um, so it's all Ashdown Forest when I moved to Nova Scotia um, yeah here's the the closest wilderness area to where I live Uh, you can see now this is a lot in some ways a lot wilder there's only certain areas where it's easy to walk through without bushwhacking and you can probably spot those this is uh, Old Lawrence Town Trail down here and then there are a few paths that allowed you to get onto you can see there's some atv trails here as well so there's a few paths i think one here and one I'm trying to remember which side of the river it would be yes yeah, one about here somewhere um so you can get into this area but it's a lot more dense and um, plus you know there's some scary stuff in here um, we'll come on to apex predators in a moment because this is about owls mainly. But the point of this um, and why I mentioned these areas is being close to wilderness areas, you hear all sorts of things at night. And one thing from a young age I was very aware of is, is owls. Um, and later on in my life I used to go to a lot of um, hawk and owl conservatories. So in the UK... Uh, depending how you think about it. So if you if you go to the RSPB website, they list five owls. The barn owl, the little owl, 
the long-eared owl, the short-eared owl, the tawny owl. The one that I used to hear most at night is the tawny owl. That's the one that does the tawit tawoo, if you're familiar with that from the UK. I've seen all of these um, to some degree at wildlife rehabilitation places. But there is a sixth owl, um, which you could argue is is the scariest of them all. Um, I'm not saying you would necessarily get attacked by this, but it is um, a top line predator. So if we go to the Country Life website, and I'll include all the links to this in the description. We've got obviously the small owl. There, there's the tawny owl. Oh, sorry, I say small owl, little owl, I meant. Um, you get, in other places in North America, you get like a burrowing owl, which is very similar to this, same sort of size. The barn owl, which is very no distinctive. I've seen loads of these um, in the UK. Long-eared owl, that's pretty distinctive. Short-eared owl, I mean... You might get it confused with, um, where's it gone? Tawny owl. I don't think so if you know what you're looking for, but it's quite possible. And then this one, uh, the European eagle owl. Now, I don't know currently how many of these might be wild in the UK apparently they were bred in North Yorkshire um, but I think conservationists as it says here are divided on this this is you know a top predator if this moves into your area um, yeah it's a death machine <laughs> I have seen one of these uh, in captivity they're pretty big and pretty scary looking um, and they do not tolerate other raptors in its territory. Um, so, yeah, as a consequence, they, they also don't tolerate each other apart from breeding pairs. So, um, you know, they're, they're, you know, they're sort of um, self-deprecating to some degree, I suppose. But, uh, yeah, I have an absolute fascination with owl. And as, as I've said, that, you know, started through just hearing... You know, what I then to dis when went on to discover would have been the tawny owl, the classic to wit to woo call, the combined cries of the male and female. So when I moved to Nova Scotia, I was curious as to, to what was around there. Now, it's a bit harder because obviously with, within Nova Scotia, you know, you, you've, you've got a, the huge landmass that is America, you know, both North, South America, there's other things. I'm not saying for one moment that um, owls are, are going to migrate up from South America, but, you know, it's quite possible for owls that might be, say, common in um, the more northern states of the USA to turn up in parts of Canada and vice versa. But these, this is um, like... Um, an artist's impression, if you like, of the owls of Nova Scotia. So these are the ones that are most likely to to see. Now, again, in terms of sounds, because this is you know, why I'm bringing this up, in terms of what I'm you know, hearing what now I've moved over, is the barred owl. Um, I can't really describe the, the call of the barred owl, but that's what I've been hearing at night is, is the barred owl. And apparently, I believe, these are on the increase which you know, makes sense as why I'm hearing more. The other things you notice that in Nova Scotia there's also a short-eared owl and a long-eared owl. There's the northern sawwet I think that is, boreal owl which you know is probably similar in size to I suppose a little owl. The great grey owl these are from what I remember, I, I've seen one of these actually in captivity in the UK. Again, it was a like a wildlife breeding and rehabilitation place. Um, I was led to believe these are hyper aggressive <laughs> and they, they don't have a particularly large brain to boot. 
Um, you've got the, sn- the classic snowy owl, uh, the northern hawk, and the great horned. I'm not sure if I, I've seen these up close. I know I've seen snowy owls, and like I say, a great grey owl. But um, yeah, these other ones. But certainly, I hear a lot of these, and uh, that's nice because it, it's it's piqued my interest again in owls and um, you know, reading a bit more about them. I bought a number of my my owl books over when I moved over to uh, to Canada from the UK. But of course, most of the books I have deal with uh, European owls. And so I, I'm looking forward to, to getting back into to looking at owls again. Um, and uh, I haven't really found out yet whether there's any wildlife conservatories around here where you might find them up close. I also believe, we didn't see it there, but um, barn owls... Um, are common as well so yeah hopefully that was uh, interesting and if, if you you don't already have a, an interest in owls uh, it might, uh, might pique your interest so thanks once again for listening bye for now and I'll catch you in the next video